Welcome to this Windows channel and this is a um, basically a video um, for a few people that asked me uh, some questions about their laptop computer and how to take care and what to avoid. So I thought I'd make a little video explaining uh, some of the things that um, probably the biggest problems that a lot of people have with laptops and uh, you know what to do to take care of your laptop so that it lasts as long as possible. Laptop computers have come a long way since uh, the beginning and I mean uh, even I the tech guy have um, you know several laptops at home and basically I've almost abandoned desktop computers. Um, you know laptops are easy to use and they are handy because you can just go around your home and go everywhere with them. So some of the things you need to be careful is first of all uh, there's a lot of misconception and there's a lot of stories about battery usage on laptops. Um, a lot of people seem to think oh you gotta put your laptop battery to zero every time you use it or else it's gonna go bad. No, that's the worst thing you can do actually. If you use your laptop and you push your battery to zero every time you use it on the battery, your battery is not even gonna last it's going to barely last longer than a year because these batteries, lithium ion batteries, are made to be used in moderation. Why is everybody thinking they have to put the battery to zero? That comes from the old days when laptop batteries had nickel cadmium batteries in them. These old batteries, they really had a big flaw when you did not discharge them to zero they would have some kind of a memory effect and would not want to discharge up to zero or charge well afterwards that's not the case in a laptop in a laptop uh, today the lithium ion batteries typically do not have any of that effect but they do not like going to zero going up to zero until your laptop almost dies will actually uh, make these batteries go bad much faster. It's okay to use the battery, but in moderation. And when you can plug in, plug in. The other thing that people think is, oh, I removed the battery from my laptop because I don't want to burn it. You're not burning your battery if it's in the laptop always and you're always plugged in. There's, not, there's no such issues with today's batteries because the battery itself has a power control chip and it knows when it needs to be charged or not. So it doesn't stay charged all the time. It actually starts charging at some point. One good practice, if you use your laptop always plugged in, every month or so, you should once a month, unplug the power cord, use your battery for maybe 20 to 30, drop it 20 to 30%. So, you know, when you see that it's at around 70% on your uh, screen, plug it back in. If you do that once a month, just to make sure that the, you know, the, the electrons move around the lithium ion battery. Um, once again, these batteries, what they hate is the extremes. Never used or too much use. So in moderation and do not believe anybody that says, oh, you're going to drop that to zero unless the battery is going to go bad. Not true. Heat is a major problem in laptops. Why? Simply because they are a very small enclosure. It is very tight in there. It's not like a desktop that has so much space for air to actually move around. Laptops typically pack a lot of electronics in a very, very small space in very often a plastic casing that just makes even more heat stay inside. So you have a few things you need to be careful about this. So what are the main things to be careful for heat? Using a laptop on your lap. Yeah, I know it's called a laptop. But the problem is when you use it on your lap, you tend to block all the vents that make the air flow into your laptop. That's one problem that a lot of people have. And not just that, there's something else that can happen. There's a hazard 
of using your laptop directly on your lap, you've noticed that your lap becomes warm. And if it's warm enough, and I mean it doesn't need to be that warm, you can actually um, basically slowly cook your lap. And there are a lot of cases of people that use laptops every day on their laps that have uh, their skin turned red and it basically stays like that because it's like a slow cook. The temperature is not high enough for you to remove the laptop to say, oh, it's too, it's too hot. But it's warm enough to actually damage the skin of your lap. So there are two reasons why using them on your lap directly is not a good idea. You want to use your laptop on your lap, use a um, cooler pad. And then you can put the cooler pad on your lap and put the laptop on the cooler pad. You can also use something rigid, you know, a book or some kind of wooden tablet that is just big enough to put the laptop on. And by having something rigid, well, it is basically like having a table so the air flows better underneath the laptop. Leaving your laptop on your bed, your couch, on the chair cushion, that is one of the worst things that can happen. And uh, all of my years of tech guy duties, I've seen many, many laptops that were completely, completely burned out because of this. What happens here? Basically, you just put your laptop on a, a surface that's basically clogging completely the vents and the hair. So basically, because of that, the air doesn't flow inside and you're burning the laptop because it just overeats easily. Air doesn't have anywhere to flow to cool it down. Never, never leave your laptop on a chair cushion, on a bed, on a couch, these are not meant for that. Always put your laptop on a hard surface where it can actually have airflow easily going through underneath. Cooling pads are great. If your laptop is, you know, there are different types of laptops. Some laptops overeat much more than others. If your laptop tends to be one of those that overeat, why not buy a cooling pad? These are not expensive. You get some from about $20 and up. And by putting your laptop on a cooling pad, you know what? It helps because there's more air that flows into your laptop. And you know what? A laptop that is cooler tends to actually work longer before it fails. The hotter a laptop, the more possibility that it could fail also. Of course, I've seen some very hot laptop run for many years, uh, that's for sure. But you know what, why not put every chances on your side? Uh, these are not expensive and they're uh, great to cool down your PC. Dust is a major problem also in laptops, um, in computers in general. What happens is the fans inside your laptop, of course, will uh, suck not only the air in to cool your computer, but also the dust. So if you're in a dusty environment, um, you know, many workplaces are very dusty. Uh, make sure that it's not clogged. You don't want to have your vents looking like this. You want to have nice, cool vents. Usually you can see the vents on, the, on one side of your laptop. Uh, you can also see where the fan is on the underside of your laptop. Um, one thing that you can do is before it gets like this, uh, a can of compressed air once a month, you just blow it gently into the vents because there's not enough of the um, dust accumulated, it's not too bad. Now if your laptop looks like this, now using compressed air might not be a good idea because you will actually be pushing too much dust inside your laptop. So, um, you know, have it cleaned professionally. Somebody will, a tech guy will open your laptop and clean it internally correctly uh, if you have too much dust. But make sure that you don't have as much dust as this because it is going to uh, basically uh, overeat your laptop. Enemies of laptop liquids. 
So many clients called me, hey, I've spilled my coffee, my wine, my water, my beer. Yeah, well, try to put any liquids as far away from your laptop as possible. Don't put your glass of wine or your beer right next to it. Put it farther away, a few feet. You know, you can extend your arm to go and get it. Um, that's the worst, one of the worst enemies. And you know what? Um, in many cases, sometimes a little spill cannot can be not too bad because it can simply mean that you just change the keyboard. Maybe it could be just the keyboard that's shorter than that. Happened a few times at clients that I've gone to. But um, chances are, if there's a lot of it, you might have actually short-circuited the laptop, especially if it was working. If was if it was turned off, uh, one thing that you can try is remove the battery immediately, and uh, try to dry it as much as you can, um, or have it serviced and looked at so that they can check it out. Cleaning. How do you clean the screen of a laptop or your laptop in general? Very simple. Make sure that it's turned off. And you know what? No crazy chemicals. Don't use Windex or don't use these uh, cleaning chemicals for windows and stuff like that. You don't want to use those. They are enemies of most plastics and it will actually change what, you know, the, the finish of your laptop. What you want? Just a damp little cloth. So you just take a nice little cloth, just damp. You don't want to have it wet. Just damp and slowly clean your computer, your keyboard and uh, make sure that it's off, especially when you go on the keyboard side of it to uh, make sure that it uh, you don't activate different functionalities. And when you're cleaning the screen, gentle press, don't press too hard. These screens are LCDs. They can uh, be damaged if you press too hard on them. And uh, of course, try not to drop your laptop. That is probably, um, let's say, in the orders of uh, mishaps that break laptops, uh, overeating is probably number one. Uh, dropping the laptop and, uh, well, I'd say liquids are number two. And dropping the laptop is probably number three of the problems that people have with their laptop computers. You know, a laptop is not meant to be uh, handled roughly in general dropping a laptop very often will actually uh, break it. It can break the screen, but it can also break the motherboard. And if it does so, it renders your computer pretty much unusable. So be careful when you're handling it. Don't put it on a surface that's wobbly or always moving. Be careful when you move around your home with it, not to trip over anything. Unplug the power supplies cable from your laptop when you're moving around so that you don't trip on it. So these are a few things that are to do or not to do with a laptop. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll be uh, a little more uh, careful with your laptop computer. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel. You'll be informed when your videos are online. Give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments, questions, anything you want to know, let us know. We'll try to help you.